Good evening. Welcome to the Medfield Board of Selectmen meeting for August 19, 2014. We're a little late tonight because we had a, uh, a an executive session that uh, started before this and didn't finish. Uh, so anybody tuning in and, and finding us late, we're, we apologize for that. We're uh, announcing, as always, that the meeting is being recorded, and we want to start by taking just a moment of silence to appreciate the servicemen and women who are serving in Afghanistan. Thank you. And uh, we start with uh, an appointment tonight from uh, the Economic Development Committee. Pat Casey, chair, is here to discuss the REI for Lot 3 Ice House Road. Okay. Continued discussion. So we're here tonight to see if um, the selectmen will um, approve the Economic Development Committee to issue um, the, the request for expression of interest for mm -hmm. Lot 3 Ice House Road. Uh, we were here two weeks ago, but you didn't have a, a quorum to vote. Uh, we, at that point in time, we gave a little history of how, do we, how we got to where we are. Um, if you care to, Mark, we, can, uh, we could recount that. No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so since uh, I cannot participate in this as an as a almost immediate a butter to the property, let me just recuse myself and I'll step aside until until this discussion finishes. Then, and maybe uh, Mr. Clerk, you can take over in my absence. If you don't need more information, then I guess we're <laughs> we could just get to the get to the vote. But uh, we're happy to answer any questions you have as well. Okay. No, I didn't. I think it's very, very clear to me. Pretty straightforward. I like it nice and concise. Uh, that's what I like to say and stuff. Easy for me to understand. So I, I had no issues with there any questions. I don't know if you had any follow-up questions at all, Richard. No, I, I'm just thankful that I know you had a, a meeting uh, after uh, the last time you were um, with the full committee before the board. You had a meeting with the abutters, and it looks like you actually um, took a step back a little bit uh, with the REI. Um, so I, I think that's a good step. I think it's positive working with the abutters. Um, so I, I have no further questions. Um, is there a motion then? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the REI that you folks can go ahead and uh, get that out. For a lot three at, at Ice House Road. Yeah. Um, I will second that. Okay. Uh, uh, any favor? further discussion? No. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Done. Well, we thank you for your efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> we thank you for uh, uh, all the time you've put into this. For hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your work. Yeah. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. Looks good. That's so what? Okay. What's, yeah. I didn't need to bother coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what the time schedule now? Uh, will take place uh, with the REI? Well, we're slightly delayed. The original plan was to look for. Um, the, the REI is to come back in mid-November. We'd give ourselves a couple months to review it. Yeah. That might slide out a little, slide bit, a little bit, or we might compress our uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay. And as we talked about in the, the last time we were here, this dovetails pretty nicely with the, the work that's beginning on the hospital planning committee because yeah. this will allow us to um, sort of smoke out uh, various options that, that may be on the table, and they may yeah. some may be more uh, you know, compatible with uh, the hospital activity than others, and may fit, may factor into that planning. Okay. So um, then, after that, you would then issue a RFP at at some point. Right. Yeah. And the advantage you have being on both committees, you can also keep the hospital uh, folks up to up to speed of what other proposals might be out there. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. The next item on our agenda is uh, to hear from Selectman Richard Sorger uh, with an update on Regionalization Sharing Committee. Um, you're the committee, right? No, but um, I represented this board at the, at, um, the uh, I met with the uh, boards of Selectmen from Millis, Sherbin, Medway, Walpole, and Westwood uh, on, their, on their home turf. Yep. And uh, I'll just, I'll give you an abridged uh, version of, of what I said. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, I explained that New England is very unique in the sense that we don't have the county form of government that much the rest of the country has. Mm -hmm. Yet, we do have a unique system. It's something we have, uh, and I, in many ways, I think we're very proud of that, that system. But um, in an attempt to try to merge the best of the county system with the township system that we have in New England, 
Uh, what I'm proposing is a multi-town committee made up of five to seven towns. I'm still waiting on uh, Norfolk and Dover. Mm -hmm. uh, Evelyn tried numerous times with both Norfolk and Dover. I tried myself uh, you off. numerous times as well, and they're very polite, and they said, we'll get back to you. Um, I'm, I've not heard from them, so uh, perhaps once the committee gets started, they may still uh, yeah. come and join us. But for lack of a better name, and uh, maybe one of the first things the committee will have to do is come up with a more creative name, the name I came up with was the Informational Services and Equipment Sharing Committee, um, ISESC. So we need something a little more um, memorable, perhaps. But rather than work as a community locked in our own uh, separate bubbles, uh, we should be able to share information. Uh, perhaps there's uh, ways that one community does something that is better than the way we do it. In other words, why invent the wheel when you can learn from your neighboring community? Perhaps it's a way to make the permit process go quicker, uh, to make it easier for businesses to locate in the community. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's a way of collecting unpaid dog licenses, which has been an effort, an issue that we've had. The idea of the committee would be to look at everything from bylaws to the process, ways of doing things, and then share that information with the other communities. The second part of that was services. Perhaps there are ways we can share services, mm -hmm. uh, be it you know, a veteran agent or a seal of weights and measures or an animal control officer or any other part-time position. And I told them I fully understand the turf mentality we all have. We want to protect uh, our own. But perhaps a couple of towns can join together and share a service that will save money and give the community greater efficiency with a full-time position where now there's only a part-time position. Uh, the third part was equipment. You know, can we save money by sharing some of our equipment? Maybe we can't. Uh, but the effort of the committee would be to see if there are ways uh, that this could be possible. One never knows until one tries mm -hmm. and actually looks at some of the possibilities. So um, what I told them that I'm suggesting that each town appoint one town resident uh, to this committee, uh, the selectmen can decide. They would meet on a regular basis, come back with recommendations of what is possible, what is not possible. Nothing would be binding. Um, and and I, I use the example of when we all went to the Mass Municipal um, Convention in Boston back in the, in the fall, and we got to sit down with other selectmen and kind of pick their brain and, and get I, different ideas that they have. And maybe a follow-up I suggested was that um, this new committee would get together in a social setting perhaps with all, invite all the selectmen. Maybe we could use the Dwight Derby House. Sure. Uh, and just get to know one another, get to informally uh, discuss. Uh, one of the selectmen, I think it was um, Westwood, brought up the issue of whether that would be uh, a violation of the open meeting law. We'd have to look at that, although we meet with the mass you know, municipal. You sit uh, around the table. Stuff, yeah. Chit -chat and stuff, yeah. So um, I and and maybe if it gets going, maybe we could also bring in our area representatives and state senators, and maybe that give us a little more clout uh, if they knew these towns have similar problems and similar issues, and we want our our rep. So I I think it has a lot of possibilities uh, to that. And as I said, Millet, Sherbin, Medway, Walpole, and Westwood have all agreed okay. to take part. Uh, I would like to recommend. Uh, and he is in agreement that Gus Murby, uh, former chair of the uh, Warren uh, Committee, Warren Committee uh, serve as the Medfield representative. Okay. Thanks, sure. Sir. Great. And I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yep. So um, right now, I've asked, uh, and I appreciate Evelyn uh, has been very helpful with this, that we can look for a September meeting to get everyone together and I volunteered the Midfield Town Hall, uh, this, this room as the site of the first mm -hmm. meeting, and then they can probably rotate. I, I also suggest that probably the first thing the committee is going to have to do, and this could be tough, is come up with uh, an agenda. Mm -hmm. What are the issues they want to, to yeah. work on? So mm -hmm. that's where I am with that. I, I have some That's very nice. I opinions for that. Yeah, excellent. 
thank you for uh, undertaking that and uh, doing all of that for the town. There was uh, several years ago, there was a much more active Norfolk County Selectmen's Association, and it was a selectman from uh, Hanover that I think was very active in pushing that. Uh, Dan Matthews, I think, was involved in that as well from the county government. Uh, so it might, you might uh, maybe think about, if I can f remember who this, the uh, selectman from Hanover was, I'll, I'll send you his name. Well, I mean, there's several... That might be a little far away, but... Well, no, uh, on that same line, there's several uh, tools that I think are out there. The state is the mass uh, planning... Um, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and, and they have personnel wanting to help yeah, these things sure. get going. Uh, Mike uh, gave me information, I'll attend that on Thursday, that there's a Community Innovation Challenge Grant of what communities can do with this type of thing. So I think this has a possibility of that. I know Dave Stevenson uh, has mentioned he has some ideas uh, trying to use the uh, internet and technology to have the communities uh, find out what each uh, the communities are doing and post that. So I think there's a lot of other tools out there uh, to help the committee uh, with that. Mm -hmm. Yep, good. Thank you. Um, our next agenda item is to review the selectmen's goals and mm -hmm. the town administrator goals. So we start with the selectmen goals from last year and see how we did on what we set out for ourselves. You have 213, 214 there, Richard? I don't have mine. I've lost. I've got I, I have I have mine. I can read them if you'd like. Yeah. Sure. Why don't you go ahead? Um, the first one was dealing with communication, and it said, um, collegial and supportive atmosphere for all volunteer committees and boards. Their work recognized. Uh, we said we would meet with each board and committee annually uh, to share purposes and goals. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we've met actually no. with every committee on that. No. We, we did a lot. No. no. I think we made some good progress, though. I think it probably was one of our better years, perhaps, for I think, to getting together with, with the committees, I think. Incidentally, on your calendar, you were scheduled to meet with the treasurer, collector, and the accountant tonight, but the town accountant is on vacation this week, so yeah. we postponed it to your next meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. The second was a supportive and positive atmosphere with the uh, board's interaction with town hall staff, the superintendent of schools, all department head and employees. I thought we did a good job with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next was to institute improved government transparency and reporting to town residents on town government matters and information and explore ways to make visits to town hall by residents more user friendly. Uh, I thought with the use of the mini town halls are working with Jack Peterson yeah. Uh, the blogs uh, that are out there, um, I thought we actually did a pretty good job with that. Yeah, we we did agree. get some things. So. Yeah, I think the other thing was the uh, notices sent out to neighbors when there's a project going on. Uh, yeah. With the good, good neighbor, neighbor, neighbor policy, policy that yeah. we mm -hmm. had. Yeah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. I think that's an area where we can still uh, get a lot more information out to residents, although. And, it, um, and I, I'm, I guess I would just suggest that we think about the best way to do that, to take the information that we all see in these uh, folders and get it pushed out to to uh, the residents if, if they want to see it. I'm thinking of a system where they can sign up to, to get the documents from the uh, from the agendas and or the agendas themselves sent out to them. There's a very nice uh, uh, feature on our town website that you can sign up for to get notice of any of the town board meetings. Mm -hmm. and, and I get an email every morning that tells me what, what town committees are meeting that day, which is a nice reminder to me of what's going on. The next was develop joint cooperation between all town boards and committees, including the school department, and work to combine technology, energy efficiency, building maintenance under one leadership position that can be shared by all departments. I don't know if we've done that or not. No, but we're moving forward, though, with that grant, right? I mean, you were talking about, I think, with the we're grant. We're going to do that. In fact, right? I was talking to the superintendent today. Uh, we're going to be interviewing candidates for the energy manager, and I've asked if their facilities manager could sit down on those interviews yeah. because we'd eventually like to uh, do with that function what we've done with the IT department where yeah. we started out as two separate departments and we really have integrated them now where they function as one so it's 
worked very well with IT. In fact, the IT department is this week is putting the uh, uh, computers and telephone system in the new town garage. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a that was a great step, Mike. I think that was an excellent idea to create that sort of facility. It took a number of years, person. but it worked out very well. You know, I think yeah. probably the facilities. Energy manager, facilities manager will be the same way, but oh, I would think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's too bad that we can't have that carry over to the business side too, and have a joint business office for the town and the schools. But yeah, although to a certain extent it does. Now we have uh, essentially we do we have combined the payrolls. The school enters their own payroll. Yeah. Each of the departments enters its own payroll now, and the accounting department can concentrate on on the overall payroll system. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now doing that uh, with the vendor warrant system. Uh, the school department and town accounting systems are being combined into one system, yeah. so that will be much easier for reporting. Oh, sure. And the school department is experimenting with the uh, uh, purchase order requisition system, so Good. Good. encumbrance so system. Yeah. yeah, so we're getting so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. it, 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 the other thing is the financial uh, function in town, they all get along very well. You know, the uh, uh, accountant, the yep. treasurer collector, the assessor's office, yep. uh, the payroll departments, yep. the school business manager, they all work together as a team. So we do a lot of a lot more of that than you would, would think ordinarily think if you looked at the organizational structure yeah. but the way it in fact functions yeah there is a lot of consolidation and, and that is in everywhere there's a number of communities that have battles between that so that oh, sure. that absolutely yeah. Oh, yeah, i think yeah. one of the best things uh we did about 18 years ago when we put the school department offices in the town hall yeah and yeah. that's fostered a lot of cooperative spirit. Sure, people forced to, to, they're right there. You're in the same building. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, think it's I think the other thing that plays into that very strongly is the longevity of all of the staff. The fact yes. that uh, the people have been working together for such a long time. Yes, we're all getting up there, I guess. <laughs> the uh, next was to uh, identify areas of regionalization. I just talked about that. Okay. I think okay. we're, yeah. we're doing well with that. Yeah. Next was improve communication with our state and federal representatives, work with their staff to help Medfield with grants and other assistance. We had a pretty busy year with them, I think, yeah? We, don't we have with the state. We haven't uh, had our federal congressman in yet. I don't know if we could get him in at some point. Yeah. No, I know we talked about trying to get him in, and we'll see if we and can And the state do reps don't come very often either. They, it would be nice if they could come a lot more often and, and report yeah. on what's going on. Yeah. Well, I think this uh, probably now that the formal sessions have ended, it will be easier for them because I think they've been out straight the last few months. Yep. And, and on top of that, they've had the hospital issue to deal with. So I think yeah. it's kept them pretty busy. So hopefully now that that's behind them, we can start getting them out on a regular basis. Regular basis, yeah. Next was to improve the operation updating of the town's website. I don't think we did anything on that. <coughs> But we've added new features too. We've been populating different areas of it. Yeah. Um, we actually have a training session for all our new uh, employees. I think it's the second week of September, um, so that they can start adding their own stuff. Okay. Good. Good. Excellent. The second of the goals was to provide a direction leadership to the State Hospital Advisory Committee, work in partnership with the committee in the Commonwealth, and developing the former Midfield State Hospital site. It's been a very successful year for that. Thanks to some people in this room also. And they'll be coming in to your next meeting. You're yeah. meeting with them yeah. scheduled to meet September 2nd. Yep. Yeah. The third part was long-range planning. And the first part of that was to develop a five-year planning, planning form uh, from uh, department heads and committee chairs using uh, the water and sewer long-range plan and pavement management plan as a good example. Mm -hmm. But some success with that. We just got to keep working on it. It's always a working process. And stuff, yeah, we, you know? we've done it as far as the capital budgeting yeah. process goes, yeah. but we need yeah. to expand that. To yeah. I think what would be good is if we could ask each department or to, to give us just a very short five-year plan of what, they're, yeah. what they see in their horizon, what they see as their needs and their, their goals. We, we got those from many of the departments last year, didn't we? Yeah, for, ca for capital budget. For capital, yeah. we had a capital budget, plan. but yeah. 
The next was to um, updating of the town bylaws, especially concerning future development of the former Midfield State Hospital. So we are lacking a little bit there. We had yeah, some problems. The bylaws got codified, but nothing to do with the hospital, huh? We need to work on that. Uh, next was a strategy for the maintenance and renovations of the town buildings, including support, direction, leadership to the permanent building committee. So they're operating very nicely, I think, as a, as a separate committee. Um. Yes, they are, and, this, and we've been working with the school department on the boiler, Wheelock boiler project, so that's moving along. Um, there will need to be an article on probably the annual town meeting warrant in the spring to fund the uh, boiler project. Right. And uh, that um, they are now uh, working on the design. Um, so that is moving along smoothly. But we have the uh, permanent building committee coming in soon, too. Correct? Yes, they're coming in in September to update you on the. Uh, Town Garage and the Public Safety Public Building. Safety building. Good. Town Garage, incidentally, should be done probably by the end of the month. They moved the furniture in today. Good. They're going to be doing the paving uh, right after Labor Day, uh, final paving final and paving, yes. in landscaping. But essentially, the building is, is yep. done essentially now. Uh, Great. Looks we'll nice. We'll have to get you guys down and give you a tour of it now. That nice. And the final on the long-range planning uh, was planning for developing Medfield into a green community, including usage of solar power and improved recycling ideas. Uh, we lost to the floor of town meeting on the stretch code. Mm -hmm. So that we're not going to be a green community until the uh, town takes a different tact on, on the different requirements. But yeah. we're going forward on some of the, or the uh, energy committee is going forward on some of the solar. solar. Right. Solar they, Design Associates is currently looking at different sites in town to, for solar installations. Right, and Fred Davis is trying to set up a meeting to get the final report of the consultant yeah. on the three sites Good. that uh, she's evaluated. So. Good. so that was going to be either the 17th of September or the 22nd. Right, yeah. And then just on recycling ideas, we also uh, established that plastic bag uh, recycling committee to look mm -hmm. at, at those mm -hmm. issues. And the other thing that's happened with recycling is that the uh, swamp committee, uh, not not because of us so much, but because of the uh, leadership that they've had, has just become huge in terms of. Uh, I know it's like a beehive down there when you're going to. Hugely it's organized. A tremendous job. They yeah. really have. Um, they also uh, Medfield Green is looking into a uh, uh, fabric recycling program okay. where you can either. Um, you know, for shoes and clothing and, yeah. and uh, even materials that are totally worn, they can be used to uh, convert into stuffing. So they're going to be looking at a program hmm. along those lines. Hmm. And we did, our recycling did go up again this year, percentage. It's, uh, I believe, 26.1%. So it's gone from about 23 to about 26% since we've gone to uh, single stream recycling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. I think the SWAT people have helped with that too. I think the SWAT people, I think uh, better enforcement, I think having the police down there yeah. keeping out of towners out and, and uh, limiting the materials that, that mm -hmm. can be brought in. I think the uh, uh, electronics program has helped out quite a bit. They've taken a large amount off of that. If you think about all the stuff that was in the SWAT area, if you ever tried to factor all that into that would be normally carted away. Yeah. And that's, you know, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of heavy stuff, a lot of stuff. Yeah, in the last four years, our total tonnage between what we recycle and what we take the incinerators yeah. dropped by 333 tons. Wow. wow. So it's that's amazing. A, yeah. It's about, I think I figured it out, it's around $25,000 savings annually. Yeah. And over what time period was that? Uh, three years. For the past three years? It's yeah. actually four, it's starting in, uh, Fiscal 11 and going to the end of fiscal 14. So the total tonnage then, yeah, yeah. So total I mean, so think about that. So people obviously the impact of the swap area, or people just thinking smarter and yes. reusing stuff even on their own, if not yeah. the swap area, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what was the savings on that? About 25,000 a year. Mike, do you have a sense of what percentage drop that is? 
Um, well, I can do a quick calculation. We do about four thousand. We were doing about forty-two hundred tons a year, and we're now down to about uh, thirty-eight hundred, I believe. Thirty. Yeah, so that's uh, definitely something. Yeah. Roughly thirty-nine hundred. So forty. 200 tons to 3,900 tons. Yeah, it's just 10%. under 10%. 10%. Probably, yeah. That's great. That's really, that's really good. good. That's really good. And then the uh, fourth and final uh, of our goals was to ensure that the town continued to provide a high quality of education to its children and provide a high quality of municipal services to its citizens in the most cost effective manner possible. And the first uh, avenue under that was to and uh, analyze um, overtime usage. I don't know if we did that. We never did that, no. That's a no. The next was to create a three-year financial forecast of the town, working especially with the Warren Committee and the School Committee. And we didn't do that either. Or that hasn't been done. Uh, that's relatively easy to do, though, because we basically we go up about 5% a year on a revenue. And you get a break, and you get a break even. Yes. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the off. difficulty uh, is projecting what's going to happen with pension and health insurance sure. costs, and school enrollment, and those are yeah. big factors. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything else, yeah. you really just have to make control. assumptions as best you can about some of those things. The third was to examine opportunities for additional revenue streams. We've done that. That's, yeah, that that becomes very difficult uh, because we're so restricted by the state government as to what we can. Do. do although this year we we have worked on that this year um, with the uh, meals tax that went in effect mm -hmm. July that passed the town meeting yeah and that, that we expected to anticipate for a full year about a hundred thousand additional revenue so and, and I think also we've we've presented a positive uh, business climate especially in our downtown and each new business that comes in that that helps in the tax funds. Yes, things are looking pretty good. The next was to work with but the. Before you go on from sure. that, I, one of the things that occurred to me as I was driving actually to the meeting tonight was the opportunity for us to sell water. There's certain people that want to get Medfield water that don't actually live in Medfield, and I was wondering. Uh, and in the past, we've generally said no, um, and I was wondering. Uh, whether or not that presents an, uh, an opportunity for us to, for revenue, that we could say, oh, sure, you can have water, but you know, no. since you don't live in town, we have to charge you four times as much as the Medfield residents pay. No, it doesn't because um, uh, a we're not allowed to make profit on water, so you can't set your rates higher for I, I don't believe for out of towners. But the other problem is the state has limited the amount of water withdrawals we can make. That's the real problem. So <clears throat> what the limited amount we have, we have to keep for midfield uses, uh, particularly where we're anticipating, you know, we're going to have 92 units down on West Street. Right, we don't know what future development at the state hospital is going to bring. Be. So if we start selling water to out-of-towners, yeah. and, you know, once you let one in, you may be forced to open the floodgates, and they'll say, well, you let one in. You, you, you let my neighbor in, you got to let me tie in. Yeah, well, I'm and positing that it's, a, that it's a revenue stream for us that if, we want. And if so we had unlimited well, access to water, thing, yeah, but, but we're, we're restricted, restricted by the state as to what we can, we can take out of the ground. Are you referring to like bottled water? Or no, that, you know, no just connecting it? people up to the... Uh, we, we have had a request from a uh, Sherbin developer who wants to, uh, my understanding, uh, they, they want to tear down Heritage Hill. And put houses be Dover. and put houses, but they want to put the houses in Dover because the Dover Sherbin schools. This is not me. This is what they told us. Uh, my understanding is that the Dover Sherbin schools are so much better than the Medfield uh, schools. I agree so, with that. <laughs> but they read it. But yeah, they want say. Medfield's water and sewer. Yeah. And to me, you know, they're going to reduce the property tax revenues in Medfield by tearing buildings down in Medfield and putting buildings up in Dover so the kids can go to the Dover Sherman schools. But they want our services. And I think that's not a good idea, particularly where we're limited by the state to the amount we can withdraw. We need to save it for Medfield uses and residents. Well, I think the whole point is this is one of the restrictions for the amount of all the amount of water we can use anyway. So one thing, if it was unlimited, then you could have a conversation about does it yes. make sense to sell extra water. Absolutely, but if yeah. you're going to have limits on what you can do, then yes. 
and, 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 and the, difficult. the conservation groups have taken the position the state is now using 65 gallons per person per day. Uh, I was <coughs> in a meeting, Pete, you were at it too, where the head of the Charles River Watershed Association at the time said that that's too much. It should be 50 gallons per person per day. So if they are talking about further and further reduction in the amount of water, we don't have any water to sell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And the um, next one uh, was to work with the Economic Development Committee on ways to bring tax relief. Uh, we just kind of did that with Lot 3. So we made good progress. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. the committee um, is, is looking at other, uh, other things um, as well. And, and the last one was to explore areas of tax relief for senior citizens who own their own homes. And that we didn't do too much. I think we should look at the uh, uh, Sudbury example and see whether that's having a success. They got special legislation through the... Uh, Check, yeah. Last time I checked, which was a while ago, there, there was a great deal of difficulty <coughs> in determining how to structure that. I don't know whether they've been yeah. come up with a successful solution, but... You know, some people wanted it for everybody. Some people wanted income limitations. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Um, some people were concerned that it would drive up the cost for young families. Well, uh, it, uh, it does. I mean, it that, drives yes. up the cost for anybody that's not getting the benefit of it. Yes. Certainly. Yeah. So, My yeah. argument would be that, in general, that we get the benefit from the people that, that don't have children in the schools, and so that if they've been here for a long time, that it makes sense to give them a break, a tax break that can keep them in town and yeah. that will it, actually it does, it does make out make better sense. in the long run if we it do does, that. It does help in that sense, you know, as I think uh, to a certain extent constructing the senior center has helped too. That is I think so too, yeah. People I mean, you create social stay. interactions that people want to keep and they, yes. of course, they can still come to the senior center if they move to Mellis. And, the and if they're looking for a town to go to, they may consider Medfield because it does have an active senior program. Yeah. But, but I think also uh, with the land of what, what's going to happen up at the Med, former Medfield State Hospital, if senior housing uh, gets developed there, it gives someone at least an option. Yeah. They can stay in town because mm -hmm. a lot of these people want to stay in Medfield and, yep. and they're just being driven out of town. Oh, we're such a small, we have such a small housing stock right. that just isn't much of a variety, obviously. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunity with uh, what's going to happen up at the state hospital yeah, help there. I think so, yeah. And, and yeah. those... Uh, and I would argue that it should be an even broader area than the state hospital that we should be planning for. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, were our goals for the 2013-2014. So why don't we uh, then go to our goals for this year and see if... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I put together uh, the, the three and I combined them. I, I don't know if you uh, like these or there's more you want That's added fine. or subtracted. Or no, I thought you did. I, I tried to combine everybody's ideas. No, and I yet you did a good job. And you did that the year before and not, you did Make a nice job then Make too, I think. That's good. So, um, so what... If, we, if we're all in agreement with this set of goals, then why don't we uh, just vote to adopt them as our goals for going forward for the coming year? I uh, move and publicize them to the town. And sure. I move that we accept the draft uh, board of selectmen goals for 2014-2015 as our official goals. I will uh, second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. And I'll take those and draft a set of goals based on your yeah. goals from that. Okay. okay. And then the, I guess one of the discussions that I wanted to have based on our goals is whether our goals are just what the three selectmen should be working on or whether these goals that we just voted are goals that we expect Mike to implement for us. We seem to have a difference of opinion of that the last time we talked about this because my feeling is that where we've set a roadmap with these goals that we expect the town administration to work to implement these goals for the town then in the coming year so that when we review this in a year's time 
I think that we should be not only talking about what we've done, but we should be looking to Mike and Chris and Evelyn and asking them about the, the different goals that we've set for the town. I agree with you. After all, I do work for you. You're, you're my bosses, so I should be oh, exactly. uh, working to carry process. out your goal. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like we always do. That of all of us, I agree with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I thought that when we had a brief discussion of that. No, I, th or. I, think, I think before it was, was it either or. I, I think if we work together, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's the difference between a town administrator and a town manager. A town manager functions somewhat independently of, of mm -hmm. the board and has oh, okay. appointing authority. The town administrator is really more a creature of the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, appointed to carry out your policies. Yeah. Then our next uh, item on our agenda is the uh, town administrator evaluation and Christine has circulated to us a, a form that the town uses for uh, evaluating employees and shall we just go through the broad topics and, and uh, if people want to comment on them as we go through then we can uh, we can just comment the first one is uh, uh, Decision-making, readiness and willingness to make sound decisions, render fair judgments, initiate actions, commit resources to implement those decisions, instills accountability in team for results. I wrote down uh, uh, that I thought that uh, Mike had a great focus on the financial bottom line. Um, I've noticed, I guess, that some things aren't always at the top of the list, but uh, and that... Uh, Yes, occasionally there were issues that I wish that I had known about sooner. Um, when we did the merit raises, there were some certain things that I learned about that I hadn't known about during the year. Um, and I guess maybe one of the other issues in here, Mike, is that uh, there are certain times when you sign our names to things like the um, like the town report. That I think that that's important if you're going to sign our names that we should look at that ahead of time and. and, and I wrote it. Richard wrote it. You wrote it. You should uh, you should give it to us ahead of time. Well, I gave it to her. <laughs> well, I, I, Christine asked if I would write it, and I forwarded it back to her. But I, I right. did write it. In the it. past, Mike had written it. So we told right. him to keep Never it under mind, ten Mike. pages. <laughs> I was very Are you brief. Under the bus? <laughs> did your own mind? <laughs> I thought it came out very well. It, did, yes, <laughs> it was way better than the year before that I wrote. <laughs> Any other comments about the uh, No, I, I thought it, it was above expectations. I, I, I thought he did fine on that. Yeah, I mean, I, you, know, it's, um, you know, we're very lucky, obviously, that we've had Michael for all these years and stuff like that working for the town. It's, um, it's obviously, you know, we take things for granted because things run really pretty smoothly. This is a great town, and it isn't necessarily always the case. You know, many towns, different towns that I work in, and I get to observe their local politics, and things don't necessarily work that well in many other places and you end up having a lot of issues and that it all starts like anything else from the top down like any organization you know as far as how that how they get set you know, it's a two-way street too i mean you people are easy to work with and so yeah. it's both ways too yeah most the one thing i do write pete uh that i don't check with you and i probably should but it's usually such a last minute thing trying to get it off to the printer is the financial uh, summary in the warrant report uh, summary of town finances, but I'll try to get that to you a bit earlier. Well, I think too, it's just it's just a factor too. Sure, some things come across. You know, we have a lot of stuff that ends up being last minute type stuff, and we don't have much chance. Sometimes we use some things, but I think that's just the way it, it's a small town. We don't have, you don't, obviously there's and, and no uh, staff and, to and work and with, so you, you're throwing stuff together. Well, in in truth, I have Evelyn and. Chris saying we've got to get that to the printer today, or we won't get it out on time. So, uh, and luckily, they every year they somehow manage to get it out on time. But you know, that's one thing I don't think people appreciate: uh, the town report and the warrant report are all done in house. Yeah, they're they sent photo ready, and the turnover time with the printer is remarkable. And considering we have to send that out to. 4,000 households. Yep, and everyone always has it. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, quite a job. So. Yeah. And they do it, not me. I don't. They just tell me what I have to turn in and they put it all together. So they crack the whip. Yeah. 
So the next uh, category is accountability, and it says ability to undertake projects and meet or exceed realistic deadlines, anticipate project needs, changes, and meet new priorities, effectively measure project progress, take corrective action as needed, and follow up as required, manages time, establishes appropriate course of action for self and others as needed to accomplish goals, emphasizes problem prevention, recognizes potential unintended consequences of action or inaction. And I guess I'll start again. Uh, uh, and I just said that most tasks are, are very successfully handled. Um, I know that that Mike has not been taking the leadership role on the Medfield State Hospital, and uh, but and I, and I guess I guess the the one thing that I, I wondered about was sometimes how you allocate your time. But that's you know it works for you, so that. Sometimes, it works for the town then. It's uh, a <laughs> when you come in in the morning with the best of intentions and you go home yeah, at the well, end of the day and you haven't done the thing you were going to. Yeah, yeah and, you, and you need to be responsive to the residents when they show up. So yeah. it's, people don't like to show up and, and, and hear that, that, you, that you can't talk to them. Uh, I, I actually I thought he, he did an outstanding job on that. I mean, he's here um, weekends, Fridays uh, till 7, 8 o'clock at night. Uh, he puts an incredible amount of hours in on that. And even on the issue of the hospital, I think uh, by putting Christine, who I think has done a tremendous job uh, on behalf of the town, um, it, the work is getting done. I don't think he can possibly do everything. No. So I think you have to delegate, delegate uh, responsibilities. And, and that does take a lot of pressure off me because I <coughs> feel comfortable with Chris. She works well with the commissioner, with the DCAM staff, with Bill, and. Uh, the shirt sure committee and the shack committee so I think yeah. it's, uh, uh, I feel very comfortable with with her handling that so she uh, she does have a planning background yeah. although sometimes you may forget that because she does so much in human resources down uh, but that actually is her background in planning so yeah. that's why I think the hospital is a perfect yeah. good shoe for her to tackle yeah I was just saying too just to follow up too I mean you know there's certainly no issue that um, that that Mike isn't willing to um, take charge of, and, and, and I appreciate that. We appreciate it. He takes a lot of heat for us, and is you know willing to volunteer. Oh, I'll take care of that for you. Whereas other places, we'd be kind of left doing, I think, a lot of other little odds and ends. So I, I do appreciate him doing some of the dirty work. Isn't quite the right word, but but kind of cleaning up a lot of little little messes that we normally would end up you know having to get involved with that we don't have to. So I, I appreciate that personally. The uh, next general category is staffing slash people development, and uh, my general comment there was everybody seems to function really well together. Um, so, yeah, I, I had above expectation on that too. Yeah, no, I think once again, as we've talked about, Me it, too. We're, we're really lucky that we've got um, we got a lot of great people to work for the town. That uh, at least from our perspective, seem to all get along pretty good, you know, and uh, you know. And, well and, and, and our turnover rate is very low yeah. compared to yeah. a lot of towns. You know, some towns sure. have we'll huge that. turnover so rates. So it, it, it's really good. It's really Maybe good. some of us stay too long. <laughs> uh, next broad category is uh, leadership. Um, and I guess I, I, I rated you at the absolute top on that, I guess. Outstanding. Um, and I just had a quibble, I guess, because I've always thought that we should be recognizing the, the longevity of certain employees, because we do have huge longevity in <coughs> town, and, and I think that it'd be nice if we did something as a town to recognize people at different stages of their career in town, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, whatever it is. Some of them are 50. So. Yeah. The uh, school department actually does a pretty good job on that. They recognize you uh, at your 25th. Okay. And yeah. others, and they make a big deal about that. Yeah. Anything yeah. on that one, Mark? Or? No. no. Okay. Teamwork cooperation was the next one, um, and I just I rated uh, you above expectations on that one. Yeah, I, I had outstanding on that. Yeah. Same thing here. Uh, let's see. What does it say? Quality and quantity. Commitment to quality improvement. Doing it right the first time. In quotes. Sets the per personal example, timely and accurate completion of work assignments, and uh, and I had you above expectations on that. 
Yeah, I, I think he, uh, he sets a tremendous personal example, and I think the other employees see the time and effort he puts into that, and I think that reflects on, uh, on the rest of the town hall staff. Yeah, we, we're actually, we're obviously, we're very lucky with everyone that's been willing to, uh, and all the town staff's been willing to put a lot of extra time. When we have so many committees and things going on, we're very lucky that everyone's able to devote the extra time to kind of make sure things get done the right way. And uh, we're just very fortunate that we've, we've got that. But, but I, I, I think we're spoiled in the sense that he puts in so much time. The average person, I don't know if there's another um, a, a, a town manager, administrative assistant, or anybody in that capacity that uh, that is here in town hall with the with the amount of time that I he know. is. Interpersonal skills, and and I had you uh, above uh, expectations on that category as well. Yeah. Um, outstanding. Communication skills, I had you as outstanding there. Uh, yeah. Technical job knowledge, um, and my comment here was that uh, it, it was just excellent knowledge, obviously, with three exclamation marks, and, and my comment to Mike was that, you, that he could be leading all the programs at the MMA uh, seminars that we go to, because he, he just knows this stuff so well. Plus his areas, just in, in the financial areas, uh, his work with the Warren Committee, his uh, finance 101 uh, course he gives to the Warren Committee every year. Uh, his knowledge of the budget is, and, and a town meeting, um, even when he doesn't know uh, what issue is coming up, uh, when there's dead silence of who's going to respond to that, usually everybody looks at Mike and he's able to, you know, give the answer to that. Yep. Pull it out of his hat. Or make one up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gotta, you just got to appear to know what you're talking about. That's all <laughs> it's safety and environmental. Understands and demonstrates adherence to all safety and environmental policies, including OSHA standards. And I had you above expectations on that, even though I think that you don't believe the wetlands bylaw applies to the town. But <laughs> I, although that's one of the things I take pride in over the years is all the, the, we've been able to accomplish in terms of open space acquisition yeah. and historic preservation. I think that... Uh, we've acquired hundreds of acres of land and and kept the potential for trail system which yeah. probably is going to be whoever takes my place to figure out how to connect all these lands but at least we have the ability to do so you'll do that yeah yeah anything more on that one no decision-making problem-solving um, let's see I had you above expectations on that uh, as well as did I yeah yep I'll just, uh, uh, I guess I'll just re read my general comments, Mike. Uh, profound knowledge of municipal government functioning in Medfield in particular. So used to running the town of Medfield that you appear to handle the annual budget cycle tasks without great effort and or planning. Um, your longevity of service to the town and the longevity of so many of your colleagues in our town government works to the benefit of all town residents. Things work smoothly and that comes from you and your leadership. So, thank you for what you're doing for the town. Thank you. I was hoping you'd say I was doing a terrible job and you'd fire me so I could get out of here. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, anything else, Richard, Mark? This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.